It's time for the DNC coverage of so-called Slay Queen, Good Vibes, Happy Going Kamala to come to a close because it was all a bunch of scripted nonsense without any policy talk. Just talks about hope. They're trying to copy Obama's campaign and, you know, it's not working. And Trump is a threat to democracy and is a convicted felon, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting cheek muscles from yawning so much. Now, let's talk about the fact that Trump almost took a bullet for this country to save democracy. And he did so in another Dr. Phil interview. Yeah, I know it's crazy to say a presidential candidate can handle interviews, but this is a preview of an interview that will be released this Tuesday, which I'll be looking forward to. President, thank you for sitting down with me again. Thank you. Very proud to be talking to you. You've been really busy, and I have to ask you, it's been seven or eight weeks since would-be assassin Thomas Matthew Crooks climbed on top of a roof on a shockingly close building mm -hmm. right in front of you and fired eight rounds from an AR style assault rifle shooting you in the ear. Take a look at what happened. YouTube doesn't like the sound of bullets, so unfortunately you have to listen to my voice. Uh, but how's your day going? Mine's fine. Experts said, frankly, you shouldn't be here right now. Experts said a kill shot was almost a certainty. But yet, here you sit, you had to have asked yourself, you had to have reflected on this, how am I here and why am I here? How do you answer that question? It's a very hard one to answer. When it happened, it was a whack. I mean, I said something's going on there. It was a real whack to the ear. But you're not thinking about that. And um, I was lucky I went down quickly because if I didn't go down quickly, bullets were coming right over my head when I was down. I heard them, they were, they were moving along. They moved pretty fast. I said, how fast does a bullet go? They said about 3,000 miles an hour. That's a lot. They gave it to me in feet and then they gave it to me. I said, no, no, I want to know in miles per hour. And it's more than 3,000 miles an hour. And you hear it, you hear the whipping sound. So I was lucky in that regard. But the big luck was, um, because that's something you can control. You go down quickly. If you don't go down quickly, you have a problem. But the big thing was the turn. And it wasn't only the turn. It had to be a perfect 90-degree turn, or you would have been, I wouldn't be with you today. And I had to be looking at something to the right. And the people, we had massive crowds, and they were in front. So there was no reason to be looking to the right. You had no people right or left. And you know the graph, my all-time favorite graph, showing my great numbers on immigration, stopping immigration virtually at the border, which is a big subject. And I was very proud of that grip, but I only use it about 20 percent of the time. It's always on my left and it's always at the end of my speeches, always. And this was the very beginning of the speech. I mean, like the very beginning, it was on my right. So if you add it all up, it's like millions to one, millions of the odds. But I made that perfect turn. I just see it on television again. It's today, just before I came in. It's up big on the screen again today. And, and in finding out, I, you know, I have the endorsement of the NRA, but I don't know. Uh, I have no knowledge of guns. Like, as an example, I have two sons that have extreme knowledge. They're great shooters. And Don and Eric both told me separately that that's a guaranteed shot for a bad shooter from that distance. 130 yards sounded like a long way away. As a, as a shooter, that's a very close target. They said, to relate it to me, they said it would be like sinking a one-foot putt. Mm. I said, that's not good. This is the second time he sat down with Dr. Phil in the span of, what, three months? So I think it's clear that Dr. Phil is going to vote for Trump, even though in the past he made negative comments about him. But anyways, realistically, Trump shouldn't be here. The fact that he turned his head in the nick of time is a gift from God, and arguably happened because of God. I mean, look at this image. If he didn't turn his head, my God, I don't even know want don't want to picture that image in my head and his reaction of fist bumping in the air was no short of strength and the fact that his first instinct was to have that reaction to let his supporters know he is okay speaks volume and that's the kind of leader you want so whenever trump debates kamala and she wants to make some garbage claim that he's some threat to democracy he needs to have the comeback that he almost took a bullet for democracy and that'd be an instant kill mic drop moment but no democrats want to vote for kamala because she's a female 
even though they are the party that says men can be women and gender doesn't matter, but gender matters now. I'm not tracking that.